everybody. A little bit up. It's supposed to catch everything I say by distance. There you go. Okay, so welcome, welcome to our last night. I can't believe it's our last night. I'm, I'm so I'm like bittersweet because it's been so sweet to have everybody here, and then it's like it's you know it's coming to the conclusion. But I'm so excited, of course, because I'm always excited here. <laughs> um, but thank you for coming. Thank you for those who are online. And I am Becky Siddle. I coordinate this event with my wonderful team, who I'll introduce to you later. I always want to start with our, our love offering. Our food pantry love offering had $27 last week, which has brought us to over $300. And I am so, oh man, again, excited. So, so pumped for that. So if you could stand, and we'll start with our worship mm -hmm. song. You can go ahead and sit down. And let's start with a, with a prayer, now that our hearts are... Whew. Dear Lord God, God, you are so good. You are so wonderful. And I thank you for every woman that's here, every person watching online. Lord, we just we give you our hearts, because they're, our hearts are yours anyway, Lord. We give our breath of praise to you. And I want to welcome you in, Lord, here, and just captivate our hearts. Speak to us through Melissa. And Lord, let's just praise you in everything that we do. And it's in your wonderful name that we pray. Amen. 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 So I do want to um, welcome Melissa on up. In the first year that I had her here, I didn't really give her an introduction. So this year I came more prepared. And she's recently retired as Director of Education from here at Christ Church. And I know she's busy with grandkids, right? Yep, because grandkids are awesome. Well, I think kids are awesome. But... Uh, Anyway, thank you. Let's welcome her and all she is. For those of you who don't know, there used to be a clock. My staff knows, or my, my used to be staff. There used to be a clock back there, so when you spoke or when there was staff meeting, you could tell what time it was and when you needed to be done. But that clock would almost give you a stroke because it did this a lot. It was terrible. And so now I wish I had it. So I went and stole Shane's clock off of his wall. Um, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm taking your clock, sorry. He's like, okay, whatever. Hey, I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad that Becky um, asked me if I would do this because I am thrilled to talk to you guys about Jesus because that's what I like to talk about. I love to talk about him. I love to talk about worship. I love to talk about prayer. And um, that's what I love. I love this song because I loved what it said. I, all I own, all my heart, all my soul, all my love, you can have it all. And isn't it nice when we're in a really warm room and we're worshiping and we're singing that? Don't we mean that with every fiber of our being as we're swaying back and forth? Don't we? Don't we truly mean that? And like the second you walk out the door, it's over. <laughs> I'm, 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 raise your hand, it's over, right? Let's just be real honest. You get all wound up and it feels good and you truly want it to be. You want him to have everything that's yours. You want him to have your heart. You want him to have your love and your soul. And yes, Jesus, you can take it all. But women, more so than men, well, no, I'm not gonna say that. Women are control freaks. We wanna be in control. We wanna control the scenario. We wanna control the roadmap. We wanna control our households. We wanna control everything about our lives. And, and to say that we want God to have it all, we do, but God, does that mean I don't have control? Does that mean I have to give you control? Because I really think I can do it okay. Right? Isn't that true? I think a lot of times we desire a lot of things, but in actuality, we desire them until we leave the building, and then we get back in real life, and it's over. The feel-good's over. The warm gooeys are over. You've stopped sweating from being in here, because it's really... <laughs> the sweat... <laughs> The sweat has dried, and, and then everything's over. Um, but Becky asked me to talk about prayer tonight, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that, but to me, we're going to start this direction. All right, take a breath. The desire of God's heart 
the absolute desire of his heart is to have you know him and to have you be in relationship with him. God wants to be in relationship with you. Now, what I want you to do right now is forget about what you left on the stove and how messy your kitchen is. And those of you who got kids or teenagers, which is like having little ones, but they're just bigger, um, <laughs> just don't think about it, okay? Take this minute for you. Take a deep breath and just listen to what I'm hoping God's going to say because it's simple. This is just ABCs. This is simple. But God wants to be in relationship with you. Wrap your head around that for just a minute. The creator of the universe wants you and me to be in relationship with him. How can we be in relationship with him without communication? Prayer is that communication. Prayer isn't just asking for stuff. How many of you spend a lot of your times and you don't really even realize that you're just asking him for stuff? Nobody wants to raise their hand because you're like, I didn't want her to pick me out. <laughs> I didn't want her to point at me. Well, I'm sorry, I used to. I used to, to do it, not even realizing I was doing it until I started journaling. And when I would pray, I would write my prayer because I'm ADHD severely. So when I write my prayer out as I'm saying it, then it's easier for me to, to, to just have that thing. Now I don't have to do that. But I went back and looked at my journals from years ago and looked at my prayers and I decided to circle how many times I said I and me and mine. It was disgusting. And I just thought to myself, oh God, are you so sad with me? Because I just spent most of my time talking about me and what I needed and what I wanted. Prayer isn't just asking for stuff. Help me with this. Help me with that. Fix my health. As we get older, it starts going down the tank. Um, just does. <laughs> um, fix my health, fix my problems, fix my kids, fix my kids' marriages, fix my finances, fix my job, fix my husband. That's a big one, isn't it? God, could you just fix my husband? <laughs> fix my marriage. But you know what? I think what we really want God to do is snap it all perfect. He, you, he wants, or you want him to snap you perfect, Make all your attitudes right, make you healthy, make you not sick, make you a size two and, and help you to figure out how to be a size two when all you do is eat peanut butter M&Ms and lots of bread and butter. I mean, we want him to snap everything perfect. But guess what? God is never, ever, never, ever, 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 ever going to do that. Because if he did, then it takes our need for him out of the equation. So we need to stop asking God to snap the situation perfect because he's not going to do it. Now, God, I have known people who've been instantly healed from stuff. I mean, I'm not saying that he can't do it, but generally he's not going to do it because we as humans have a very short memory and we ask him for things and, and pretty much promise him the world. And the second he does what we've asked him to do for us, we kind of have a tendency to move on to something else. So God's never going to do anything that's going to take him out of the equation. What I want you to see about prayer, and if I cry, that's okay. Because I love Jesus, and I cry every time I talk about him. And when Shane and I talk about God, which is all the time, which is awesome, I cry a lot. And he just looks at me like, poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> but what I have found in the years and decades of struggling with me thinking I'm okay and enough. Prayer is a love story, an absolute love story between created and creator. A love story built on trust, time, failure, success, forgiveness, and quiet. Just being still, sitting still, waiting and watching for him waiting and watching for movement of him. Sometimes the best communication is just being quiet. It's in the stillness. It's when we stop striving. Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Cease striving and know that I am God. How many of you have a hard time being quiet? Sitting still? 
I'm like a four-year-old. Um, and I have a four-year-old brain, which I love because it makes everything wonder. Everything to me is every day. It's like, oh, wow, did you see that butterfly? That is so amazing. Um, I, I truly am. I'm like that. You can ask Shane, and he'll be like, again, bless her heart. <laughs> yes, she is. So for me to learn how to be quiet was a miracle. It truly was. Because my mind doesn't stop. My brain doesn't stop ever. Um, I've decorated 400 million and a half houses and I've planted gardens all over the world in my brain. It doesn't stop. But when I learned how to be quiet in God's presence and wait for him, it was life-changing. It was life-changing. And all of this is learned over time. This isn't something that's just like this. It's learned over time. If you've accepted Jesus, and I know most of you, and I'm sure all of you have, if you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, then guess what? You're already in a relationship with him. But that's not where it ends. That's just the beginning. Psalms 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. What is that? That's a verb. It's an action word. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, salvation is a free gift. We ask Jesus to come into our lives, and he does, and that's a free gift. And we accept that gift. And I always picture it like this. It's wrapped in this beautiful, gorgeous wrapping paper, just these big bows, and it's gorgeous, and it's so, like, it's almost so beautiful that it's the present. But we accept that gift, and we say thank you to the Lord for it. And guess what? Most of us set that present right down at our side, and we never open it. We never open it to see what's on the inside. And I'm going to say, open the gift. Open the gift. There's more to being Christian. And there's more to being saved than just the act of asking Jesus into our lives. That's a must. You have to. But there's so much more to being Christian than that. So we're doing all that. But guess what? We have an enemy. We do. We have an enemy. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But that's not where it ends. That's a period. That's a sentence. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The very next sentence says, I came. Not but I came. Just I came to give them life and life in abundance. The devil wants to kill our desires for God. He comes to steal our peace, our joy, our health, our relationships, and he wants to destroy us. That's his job. And guess what? A lot of times we let him do it. We just stand by and let him do it. We let him rob us blind, and we just simply sit back with our arms folded like there's nothing we can do. How many of you have been on fire for God, and, and you've had a desire for God, but then it starts waning, and then it goes away, and it's like, no, I don't... I mean, I'll go to church, but I don't have such a desire anymore. You've been robbed. You've been robbed. How many of you have had a sense of unbelievable peace come over you about a situation that you've just been anxious about and thinking about and praying about, and finally you're feeling some peace about it, and, and you're just like, oh, thank you, God. But the second something else happens, that peace is gone. You just got robbed. I always think of it as an actual robber or as one of my grandkids used to call it, Roberts. Um, when the Roberts come, <laughs> do we shoot Roberts, Nana? That's what we, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not going to say. Um, anyway, I always picture it like, you know what, someone's calling you, and they're going to say, hey, at 12 o'clock tonight, someone's coming in your house, and they're going to rob you blind. And you go, oh, hey, let me set my clock for that. What were you going to do in between that time? You're going to shore everything up. You're going to make sure doors are locked, windows locked. You're probably going to call the police, let them know that. So you're going to shore everything up. But when the enemy does it, we just stand back, open up the door, and we just let him in. We just let him in. God came, Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance. Why do we just let the devil in? Why do we just get robbed blind sometimes? Because we've not opened the package. We've not developed our relationship with God. We said yes to salvation. And a lot of times that's where it stops. You're living life, but you're not living your best life. Your best life lived is being an absolute, <laughs> Reverend Mike, <laughs> absolute, absolute. Um, and you will also know that I am like Odie the dog. I get taken off track real quick. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, well. Um, your, your best life is when you're living daily with Christ, when you're living your, your every moment counting on him being next to you. And that is possible. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalms 91. One, and it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen to me. He, you and me, we're hers, so, but he means he as the whole, not just he versus her. Sometimes I've said that before, and someone will come up to me afterwards and go, I'm sorry, we're not hims or he's, we're hers. Okay, whatever. We're all peoples. Um, but he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm the kind of person that thinks of it like this. How many of you had children or grandchildren that literally in the store or in a new situation stuck themselves right, yeah, stuck themselves right there? Maybe even wrapped their little arms around your legs so when you walked, it was like you had an appendage stuck to the side of your body. And heaven forbid anybody would talk to them because then they would go up underneath <laughs> your, your clothes trying to get away. That's how we're supposed to be with God. <laughs> That's how we're supposed to be. We are supposed to literally grab onto him like a little girl in the store so we don't get lost from our parent. If we dwell in that secret place, in that place just for him and I and you and him, then we will abide. We will live under the shadow of the Almighty. God has a big shadow. He creates a huge shadow. And in that shadow, doesn't mean that you're always going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise, and no one is going to get hurt. That's not what it means. But it means that you live under the protection of the Almighty. We live in a fallen world, and God is not going to change. Um, hmm, how do I want to say that? Let me come back to that. I'm going to have to think about that. Um, but God's, God's umbrella, his shadow is huge. And he wants us to live underneath him, abide in him. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. A lot of times we're so wounded and so hurt that we think God doesn't love us and that there's no way he wants to draw near to us. Again, another lie. How many of you have been so wounded before you didn't think you could walk through these doors? Yeah. I mean, there's only two of us. Wow. Wow. Thanks, Samantha. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Be a pastor's wife. <laughs> Wounded. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's part of the job description. And, and you know what? If, if you stay wounded, then guess what? You're defeated. You're not living your best life. Wounding is human. It just is. It's terrible, but it's human. Get over it. Take it as a backhanded compliment. You know what? The devil's mad. He's going to throw somebody in your face to try to get you off track. Say to yourself, thank you. I must be doing the right thing. And just move on. And, and think about this. The people who are doing the wounding are miserable. People that are wounding you for whatever purpose, you need to understand they're miserable. And maybe what you do is you pray for them. Pray for your enemies. Pray for the people that hurt you. I know that's completely counterintuitive to anything that we do, but pray for those who've hurt you. And you know what? Ask God to forgive you for the, the feeling that you have towards them that's making you wrong too. Prayer's always good. When you decide to draw near and you're getting in a great groove, how many of you have done that? You're getting in a great groove with God. You've decided you're going to just do your devotions and you're going to pray and you're going to seek his face and you're going to volunteer for all kinds of stuff and you're going to sign your name up on those volunteer sheets. Whew. Yeah. And you just keep going and you're like, wow, I'm doing really great. I'm doing awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, woo. And then guess what? The enemy's going to come and he's going to say, yeah, God doesn't love you that much because remember you screwed up and you've messed up way too many times. God doesn't love you. On and on and on. How many of you have heard that in your voice, in your mind? You get on that right track and you're doing the thing you know God's asked you to do. You're serving in children's ministry. Shout out to children's ministry and wonderfully made. And you're serving in children's ministry, or you're serving as a greeter and a welcomer. You've got all these people in here. Y'all need to be putting your names on those lines. <laughs> um, but you you get in that groove. And you're so happy because you think, wow, God, I'm, I'm with you. I'm on this. And then <coughs> the enemy tells you no. And we fall for it. Don't fall for it. Put your blinders on. 
scream at the devil, I've done this before, I've done it outside, and I've done it when people have been around. <laughs> so I'm sure that people probably think I'm loony man, but scream at the devil and tell him he has no place even speaking to you because you are daughters of the Most High God. We've got to start seeing ourselves as daughters of the Most High God, not these lowly creatures that are sick and depressed. And no, 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 no. We are daughters of a king, of the king, of the creator of the universe. And if we could get that right here and get that right here, we would be unstoppable. It takes time, though. It doesn't just happen like this. If you do that a couple hundred times, yelling at the devil out loud and staking your claim, he eventually will think, well, it's not going to work with her anymore, and he'll move on to somebody else. I promise. I really do promise. It does work. When you decide you're going to plant your flag, and by golly, nothing in the world is going to move it, then you've won. It's that easy. Plant your flag. And guess what? You've got table mates. You've got people that you know that pray. Call them on the phone and say, pray for me that I need to plant. You don't need to go into detail. They don't need to know it. But say, I need help. I need you to pray that God will help me plant my flag so I can move on and be victorious and be the daughter that I know I can be to the Most High God. So here's where relationship happens. I need to look at my time. Okay, here's where relationship happens. It's in devotion. Devotion. Now, devotion means different things for some, some people. Hello. Some people think devotion means I'm going to read 67 chapters of the Bible a day. Awesome. 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 <laughs> some mean I'm going to read a verse a day. Awesome. Awesome. There's no written way to do devotions. There's just not. If you're the, of the mindset you can read a ton and you can remember what you're reading, read a ton. If you can remember one verse, be still and know that I am God, Psalms 46.10. That's easy. And that's powerful. Because how many times can you say that to yourself in a day? Be still, Melissa, because he is God. It's in devotion time and reading God's word. How are we going to know how to combat the devil? How are we going to know what God wants us to do if we're not reading the only book that's been written by him? How will you communicate with him and him with you without prayer? For me, prayer is an open-ended conversation. And if any of you have ever seen me drive and or been by me at the store at Walmart and or Lowe's. <laughs> there have been times at Lowe's. I'm so glad you maybe, maybe you've, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe you've noticed this. So please know I'm not talking to myself, although it sounds like I am. I have a tendency to, uh, when I say open-ended conversation, I truly mean I'm having a conversation with God like he's standing right there with me shopping at the Lowe's. Um, here's how my morning starts. I get up about 5.30 and all of a sudden, I hear my big 85-pound boom, 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 pit mastiff coming down the stairs. And it's time for her to go for her little first pee-pee of the morning. And so <laughs> she and I go out, and she does her thing. But guess what? The second I walk out the door, I look up in the sky, and I take the biggest, deepest breath. It does not matter if it's 150 or if it's 50 below zero. It doesn't matter if there's seven feet of snow or if it's deluge pouring rain and I need a boat. And I say, good morning, Lord. Did you sleep okay? Everything that you've done so far today is beautiful. The air smells beautiful. I can see the grass. Everything's beautiful. That's how I start my day. And that doesn't stop. So then I just have a conversation with him the rest of the day. There have been times I've tripped. How many of you are trippers? Like you trip like you're clumsy? I'm terribly clumsy. And it's funny. Shane gets scared because sometimes I fall, and he's like running to me, but then it makes me laugh, and I over-dramatize how the fall looked. And uh, sometimes when I do that, I'll get up, tickled, and I say, God, did that make you laugh? <laughs> did you think that was funny? Because I thought that was funny. So I do have those conversations with him. And then there's times where we have very deep prayers, and, and I need to ask him about a situation or whatever. But guess what? That's over time that that's happened. It's not just something... You know, and it's, and I'm not saying that's how prayer has to be. You guys determine how prayer has to be for you. For me, it's just an open ended conversation. And when I go to bed at night, I look up at the skylight and I say, Thank you. 
Everything was so beautiful, even if it was terrible. God, I'm alive. You've given me breath. You've given me a family. Does my family always make me happy? No. No. Do I think my kids need to be at my house every day? Yes. Do I think my grandbabies need to be at my house every day? Yes. Are they? No. Things aren't always perfect, but I thank him for the day anyway. And God, whatever it is you want me to do tomorrow, tell me I will do. A relationship and prayer with God takes time. And we've got to decide it's what we truly want. We've got to decide to open the package and go for it. And I can tell you, if you truly do that, you will never be the same, ever. Not all is going to always go well. Like I said, we've lived in the fallen world. We're human. But God will be with you at all times, and he will see you through it. Um, do I have time, Becky, to, to read a passage? Are you sure? Okay, because I don't want you guys to not have time to talk. This is what God thinks about you, Psalms 139. I want you to hear it because a lot of you don't think this about yourself. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it. You have hedged me behind and before. He's hedged us in, girls. He's hedged us in. He walks before us. He walks behind us. He's on our side. So how in the world are we afraid of anything? He's there. You've laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For, I, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts towards me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Isn't that awesome? Why don't we believe that about ourselves? If you guys truly want to know what God thinks about you, read the Psalms. Get in the Psalms. You can pray the Psalms. Start Psalms 1 and go to the very end. They're beautiful. It's God's character and nature towards us as females, his daughters. Here's the deal. All of us who have children, we love our boys. We just do. We love boys. But there's something between a daddy and the daughter. There's something special there. God loves his daughters. He loves the boys, but he loves his daughters too. Get in the Psalms. Let's pray. Father, I just ask you in the name of Jesus to wash over all of the women here. God, you know each and every individual thing that they are thinking, that their hearts are broken about, that their spirits are wounded over, Lord. You know all of that, and yet you love all of us just the same. Father, I pray that nobody leaves here the same. I pray that tonight would be the beginning of a relationship built over time, Lord, in stillness and quiet and in love with you. Thank you for the women of Christ Church. Thank you for what you want to do in the women of Christ Church. I pray that there would be a movement among women where it's a movement of women who are following you with no baggage and no preconceived notions of what you are and what you're not, but just following you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you again so much. Can we go ahead and clap again? Just thank you. Oh, I love it. I just, there's so many things, thank you, that just, they're marinating into my soul, they're entering my heart. Um, and one thing that it, it just kind of, kind of, it, it got pinged that you, you said, and it sparked a thought. Um, my dad was a paramedic, and something with, with tripping, and when we trip, spiritually or physically, God's also our paramedic. He comes and he takes care of us. And, and like you said, that dad to daughter love and just being there for us. And okay, keep marinating and everything. I hope you took notes because you know me, I take my notes um, and have our discussion time. She provided wonderful questions for us and just enjoy your time together. Thank you. I don't like interrupting you. That's why I'm going slower and slower as I get closer. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed your discussion time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for those who are watching online. And I'm going to watch it online again so that I can hear everything again and marinate again and everything. So I would like to welcome up my hospitality team and my technology awesome people um, so that you can see them. So come on up. The, the reason that this space is so welcoming. <laughs> the reason that this space is so welcoming and that technology runs smoothly is also thank you my husband, Nathan Tobin, they also help with the microphones and getting things all lined up. But here's Erica, she's been pushing the right buttons to make the microphones and our worship. And here is Lori, she has everything set up and our kiddos come and run and put all the tablecloths out and everything. And here's Linda. Linda's been with me since the very beginning. I remember meeting her the first time and sitting down and writing notes on my idea of women equipping women. So can we just clap for them, thank them for all they do. Okay, also on my list, I have such a long list today. Um, homework, um, how many still are doing Walk Through the Word? with the Rev Shane and the devotionals, it's wonderful, us too, and I love, you know, Melissa was talking about that things take time, and I really appreciated that, because in Genesis, when we're reading about um, Jacob and going to live with his uncle Laban, he was there for 20 years, and you know, we can read through it in a couple pages, but it was 20 years time span, and when I soak in that, I'm like, okay, I don't have to fix things tomorrow. I don't have to have things even better in a week, but I want to make those steps in the right direction. So if anybody needs reading guides, or if you have somebody that you want to give a reading guide to, there's several on the back table. Um, you're more than welcome to that. Also, if you were reading in Proverbs, you can finish this week, chapters 27 through 31, and just soak that up. Um, also, I wanted to mention um, the greeting cards, again, from the packets. If you can send those out to those who you want to encourage, if you have... Two people you want, you know, think of to encourage, save the other two greeting cards, and later this year or this month, if you think of somebody, go ahead and send it out. And just whenever God pings you, go ahead and um, enjoy that. And I was going to just mention, when I went to mail uh, those who had registered to stay at home and mail their packets out, and I went to the post office, there was over 40, I think. So each one he had to type in the address and it was truly wonderful that there were so many we also hand delivered some um, so the gentleman who's working on this he's like so what's this for and I explain it and we're, I've got the mask on <laughs> he's trying to hear through the partition thing and he goes like you know so what do you think people like get stuck on with prayer and it just opened this 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 conversation yes and you know, I'm like, well, like, we don't pray big enough. We need to pray big, you know? And he's like, well, more like, why don't people pray at all? And I'm like, maybe just have it, you know? I'm like, I've set alarms on my husband's phone. Random times, like, hey, it's 3.30 on Wednesday. Pray, you know? And it just, it helped him get into a rhythm. And golly, I should do it for myself, shouldn't I? Um, but to get into that rhythm, so it was just a suggestion. Um, to think about. And then the next thing is our love offering. Again, I'm so excited about the food pantry love offering. I didn't tell them when we started that we were going to take this. And like I said earlier, we are over $300. So if we could get to $400, oh my goodness, over the top, right? Um, but every week I've shared a story from Ethan drawing a cross 
on the, to cross out the barcode, and Adele writing, Jesus loves you, and Cora lining up all the cans from Aldi, and they've got three barcodes each, so you know, she goes down the line and crosses everything off. Now Emma, she's just turned two, so she's been in training, which means she sits in the stroller and she watches us, <laughs> and we sing a song. But I'll tell you from experiment, experience, um, we get permanent markers and different colored ones, so who gets which color? I've learned to dress them in black pants because it's very likely that something's going to get marked. Um, and maybe a shirt that's the, their painting shirt or something for those counting days. So that's kind of been a fun thing as she's watched and she's seen us do it. You can just tell she's itching to get to, to do that also. Um, so yes, so if you have um, that thing on your heart to share more for the love offering, I, I can't wait to tell uh, Kevin Novak the whole, the whole total. And then also, just as we're wrapping up, um, if you have children in the children's ministry, remember to pick them up, um, and then you can come back and finish a conversation. And um, please leave your surveys. You can just leave them on the tables. Um, but I do really appreciate your input, for sure. Um, we always take up topic ideas and how we can grow and connect you greater with Christ. And I wanted to share. The current thought is that I'm really hoping to do the first two weeks uh, two weeks as in the first two Sundays of October this year. Um, we've just had such a great response here, and I'm just really inspired to do that. So watch for that um, on our Facebook group for sure. With that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up in prayer. Dear Lord God, oh, thank you so much. Thank you for these four weeks. Thank you for creating all these women, Lord. We are your daughters, and you love us, and we can run to you with broken things and exciting things and trips and anything. We can have conversation with you every day. Lord, help us grow in our prayer life with you, in our relationship with you. You've created us in our mother's wombs. You love us so tenderly. Let us live into that. And I just pray and prophesy that you will shut the devil up, <laughs> that you will quiet that um, those lies, those things that don't belong because we have all of your truth. Let us soak in your word and your truth. Let us have that as our sword and our shield to fight back lies so that we can grow to be the ladies that you have created us to be. Please help us fill your purpose for us, Lord. And we praise you. Thank you so much. Let all of these weeks just fill us and continue and share with us. It's in your wonderful name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Have a great year. Bye. Jesus loves you.